has already started with some of that. The SEC will start in earnest on December the 28th. But these are great tune-ups to kind of figure out who you are, what you're all about, and a chance to build up your resume, no question. Wake Forest is the home team in white, LSU in purple. Tony Green, Mike Roberts, Steve Anderson, a veteran officiating crew here at the State Farm Arena. LSU has it first under new head coach Matt McMahon. What are we looking for out of this new offense? Well, they want to get Miller the ball. They're sharpshooter 44 in purple, but it's going to be hard to do with all the pressure that he invites. We know we're going to see a lot of that out of the Wake Forest offense. They love to shoot the three ball, and they average nearly nine threes a game. Hill on a runner. Gets the back iron. Frenetic pace to start things off. This is Appleby, the transfer from Florida. If you're Wake Forest, I think you want to make LSU play late in the clock. If you don't have it early, see if they can be disciplined. Their half-court defense has not been great if they can't turn you over. Shot clock down to 10. This is Carr backing in, and he coughed it up. Another turnover. And that's what they do. On 13% of their opponent's possessions, they get a steal. That's 20th in the country. Wake Forest at least does a good job getting back. And 9.1 steals a game for LSU. They will be suffocating at times on the defensive end. Three ball locks in the three ball. It is delivered by Adam Miller. Well, you better be there quick on the help. First, you don't want to let him get it. Second, you better bring some help and be up there quickly because if he gets any bit of daylight, that shot's going up and usually in. Former Mr. Basketball in the state of Illinois, back from injury. And rated to be a primary scorer, averaging just under 17 a game. Damon Deacons remain cold. LSU coming in 7-1, and one, could easily be undefeated. They had a controversial loss against Kansas State. Baseline jumper is silky smooth for K.J. Williams. He's such a tough matchup. Yes, you'd like to get deeper post position, but even if he's 15, 18 feet out, feed the big man, he'll make the right decision. Williams, one of the many transfers from Murray State. Matt McMahon brought him over. Wake Forest has not been able to get a good look yet. That's another turnover, the second. And a layup missed. Gliding to his left was Derek Fountain getting a start, the former Mississippi State Bulldog. I wouldn't call either of those turnovers forced, really. Wake Forest got to calm down, just take care of it. That's the way to get started. A three by Tyree Appleby. What a different player he's been this year. He's shooting with so much confidence. His percentages are up. I think the quality of his shots are up as well, not to mention the long leash that Coach Forbes is allowing him to play with. 44% from downtown for Appleby. Wake Forest, man to man. It's Justice Hill at the top. And a three set up, and it's rattled in by K.J. Williams. Well, you're getting a look at how he can score at all three levels. You've seen the mid-range, the three-point shot, and before the night's over, he's going to show you his work down in the post as well. Five early points for K.J. Williams, the reigning Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year while he was at Murray State. Led the league in scoring, second in rebounding. No easy looks for Wake so far. Shot clock down under five. Step back three on the way and knocked down by Monsanto. He's their best overall three-point shooter. Most of the time, three-point shooters are catching stick guys. In this game, you have a lot of guys that can shoot it off the bounce from deep. He's one of them. Transfer from East Tennessee State. For Steve Forbes, of course, was the head coach before taking over the reins. Now in his third year in Winston-Salem. Well, you're going to see what K.J. Williams can do in the post. This is where they have the advantage. He says, all right, you don't want to bring a double team? Look how easy I can make this. And then just when you think he can't shoot it from three, pick and pop, somebody better get out on a shooter. Two guys running at the ball, two guys too late. Bucket, Williams. Two-point game coming up on the first media timeout. This is Marsh. Matthew Marsh, one of two Brits on this Wake Forest roster. When you see LSU trying to keep the ball out of Appleby's hands, denying, and Hildreth, good job there. You're going to have to do that. If LSU is going to make other people beat them, you better be able to make shots like that. That was Brit to Brit. Cameron, Cameron Hildreth also from England. I don't know if I've seen a college basketball team with two players from England on the roster. Appleby. 
Rise and fire three. My goodness, he is playing with oozing confidence. He sure is, especially when you see that first one go in. The big rim just gets bigger for the confident shooter. That is an 8-0 run for the Demon Deacons. They're doing what they've been doing all year. Living by the three-point shot. We have five from downtown. That one spins out for Williams. Well, and that's going to be a good matchup for Wake there, given the size they have with Marsh. That's a blow by and a beautiful take by Hildreth. Yeah, he's aggressive. You talk about one of the most improved players, if not the most, on this Wake Forest roster. Played sparingly last year, four points a game. This year, 30 minutes and 12 points. His father played in the BBC, and his head coach was one Nick Nurse. I'd like to see Williams get this on the perimeter a little bit and take the big man off the bounce. Nice box out, and that's going to be a foul on LSU. Well, we mentioned one of the best, more respected coach in all of college basketball. A lot of it is his roots. He's never changed who he is. He's won every single place he goes. And look, let me tell you, this is a guy at Northwest Florida State that was driving a moped in Niceville, Florida. <laughs> and he wasn't on anybody's Power 5 res or, uh, job openings, but kept grinding. Got his opportunity under John Curry here at Wake Forest and has done a phenomenal job. The reigning ACC Coach of the Year, Steve Forbes. Just a really inspiring story for so many young basketball coaches that are sleeping in the film room at nights and doing all the dirty work. They, dirty are, work. Ha they are happy to have him at Winston-Salem. Demon Deacons trying to add to a 10-0 run here. 14 and change to go in the first half. SCC-ACC battle. High speed inside the hoop and the harm for the big man, Matthew Marsh. Well, really nice basket cut there by Marsh. I mean, Hildreth gets some penetration. I'm not sure you got to bring this help over. I, I think Hannibal kind of had it here on a wall, and then Williams comes over for help. And then Marsh just sees that he's got an opening. Good, strong finish. Hannibal on the foul. That's the second team foul on LSU, and that's the second Brit-to-Brit -Brit conversion there as Hildreth hits Marsh on the dime. Marsh, seven foot one, two hundred and fifty pounds, out of Cornwall, England. He's going to be a big key for Wake Forest, trying to slow down KJ Williams. He can't do it all game, but it's going to be by committee for the Demon Deacons, showing Williams different looks down low. Jalen Reed, number thirteen in purple in the game for LSU. Tough take, high off the glass, but just a little bit too much English for Adam Miller. Miller's going to really have to continue work coming off those screens. His cut catches are extremely tough right now with this Wake Forest pressure. A little rocker step, and then the drive inside, and then the baby hook. A little bit of everything there from Andrew Carr, the transfer from Delaware. Here's Hannibal. Former South Carolina Gamecock thought about it. He'll pull up from 16. And good scouting report by Hildreth. Hannibal has not attempted many outside shots at all in the year. He wants to get past you. Way to make them settle. Appleby whips it to Williamson. Up top, it's Hildreth. Now Appleby under 10 on the shot clock. Appleby on a blow by gets it to go. Yeah, and that all got created by a few turndowns in that possession. There were some threes they could have taken. They didn't settle. A little bit out of control that time by Hannibal. LSU offensive glass unable to hit from close range is Williams. And you can't ask for a much better start for Wake Forest, can you? I mean, when they hadn't turned the ball over, that was the key. They felt like they could get good shots in the half court. They've gotten whatever they wanted. LSU has gone in a scoring drought now. Seven trips they've had. Zero field goals. You see how good the transition defense has been for Wake. LSU has not been able to get anything easy. And they won't hit a field goal. They haven't hit one in five minutes, but they will get a trip to the free throw line, courtesy of Jalen Reed. Oh, this is just way too easy. Miscommunication. Appleby just... Denies the screen, refuses it, and goes all the way to the rim. The rotation not there. You got to slide over and help. See, everybody's expecting him to use the ball screen. He doesn't. And Hannibal doesn't realize he's the last line of defense. The most dangerous person on the court is the man with the ball. Got to stop that first. Jalen Reed at the free throw line, a 6'10 freshman of Jackson, Mississippi. His father, the late Justin Reed, one of the best players to ever come through Oxford, Mississippi.
I know you've got a chance to, to go against Pops, and uh, for those that d did not see Justin Reed play, he was a special, special talent. But, and then, hate to have lost him. I mean, this guy was unbelievable. Um, bigger than life. When I came in as a freshman in the SEC, he was kind of one of those guys that was the face of the SEC. When I got in the court, it was kind of like, boy, you were so nervous just to be even sharing the platform with him. Terrific man. Looked like a push there, and Reed almost got away with it, but Tony Green, pretty savvy official, seven final fours. He caught it, blew the whistle. It'll be Wake Forest basketball. I don't think you could have expected a better start to this game than what you've seen out of the Demon Deacons. Wake Forest coming in 7-2, and 0-1. Oh and there was one... Uh, one one in the ACC, their loss was to Clemson. And they led that game by seven points at the half, and then Clemson shot 70% in the second half. Muscling in and then traveling. Hey, Bradford that time tried to play some bully ball. Timeout on the floor with 11.59 to go in the first half. Well, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons are hot. Well, it's V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, a game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. You saw there Coach Brooks Savage in his third year as assistant coach with Wake Dane. I know you're very familiar with him and his story as Cam Hayes snaps a drought for LSU. Yeah, Brooke Savage was on that staff at Tennessee. I mentioned under Coach Forbes where we had a star player, Chris Lofton, who battled cancer to return for his senior season. And it was Brooke Savage that started what was called the Outlive Campaign, which raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in Chris's honor to help fight that battle. And that campaign was under Bruce Pearl when he was at Tennessee, and he's taken that to Auburn with another outlive campaign there. So I'm sure money raised is now into seven figures. But just a terrific job of stepping up, having an idea, and making an impact that uh, has just been sensational. And just about every team in the country has been touched one way or another by cancer. One more reason to go ahead and donate as soon as you can. The Santo, a little contact, no whistle on the three-pointer. Mike, this is an important time for Wake Forest because they've got a bunch of their reserves in the game right now. And so this is an opportunity for LSU to close the gap as they already have a few bad possessions in the half court by Wake Forest as the majority of starters get some rest. Well, that three for LSU, talking about big moments in this game by Cam Hayes. LSU was on the wrong end of a 13-0 scoring run for the Demon Deacons. They had missed their last eight shots. They hadn't had a field goal. In about six minutes. Well, and Cam Hayes is the guy the past two games, Mike, plus 25 when he's been on the court. Bottom line is LSU has been better when one in purple has been on the floor. And so he's had some instant impact there. Well, you and I had a chance to chat with both these coaches before the game. And we talked to Matt McMahon. You know, he, he he's positive about what they've done so far. Seven and one, you'll take that any day of the week. The one loss, again, a controversial one to Kansas State. However, he points out, we, we've got to stop turning the ball over. We've got to make better decisions. And that story starts with the point guard spot. Absolutely. They've got to be better at point guard. And so far, I think they've been good there. Only one turnover. Really, it's the, the defense on this end of the court. If, if they can't get steals, they can't stop you. And that's got to change. Rise and fire three. Kicks off the iron. Offensive glass for Wake Forest. Flying in. That's Bradford. And a foul on the floor. Cam Hayes whistled for the hole. And coming up over on ESPN and the app, we got a great slate of games all across college basketball today. How about this one? 5:15 Eastern Time. It'll be number six, Kansas, battling undefeated Missouri. There's only ten undefeated left in college basketball. We've got another one in the next game on ESPN two from here with Auburn undefeated against Memphis. Dane, I had the zoo earlier in the year. I love what Coach Gates has done in a short amount of time in Como. Yeah, and they haven't played the toughest schedule, but they've won their schedule. And that's not something you can always say on some of these teams in the bottom half of the SEC. They have some of those head scratchers that just haunt them throughout the season on their resume. Not the case with Missouri. Ituka on the layup. 
for the Demon Deacons. Back to an 11 point lead and then a whistle and a foul called as Jalen Reed takes it strong inside. There's the remaining unbeaten teams. Some of these, not surprising. Houston, Virginia. Uh, there's some other ones. I mean, Mississippi State, yep. one of six new coaching jobs in the SEC. I, I think Auburn is, I don't know. I mean, considering what they lost, two first-round draft picks, that's a little bit surprising. You, you, you expect good things out of a Bruce Pearl team, and we'll see what they do against Memphis later on. But... There are some great surprise stories already this year in college basketball. There are, and those teams are taking care of business no matter who they play because really November is also slip-up time. I mean, it's one of those where a mid-major all of a sudden looks back in January and they say, you know, we caught that team at the right time when they were still figuring it out. So they've been able to take care of business and excited to see that Auburn-Memphis matchup here next. Kind of nice to see UConn enjoying life at the top again with Coach Dan Hurley. Be out of bounds and it will be Wake Forest basketball it take under 10 minutes to go here in the first half of play so, so all things considered good job by the reserves it was a 20 to 8 game when they made the mass substitutions and now here you are you hold the double digits and you get a fresh Appleby Carr, Marsh Hildred. Appleby having trouble triggering it in and deflected out of bounds It's gotten to the point, Dane, every game we do, and you, you start putting these teams and players under a microscope, it's all about portal power, right? I mean, everybody's got key transfers that are either going to pan out or they're not, and the success of your team is going to rely heavily on that. And it's got to be right fit as well. And if I'm not mistaken, that might have banked it. we got to get another look at that. I mean, I mean... You you talk about a shot being off and still managing to get three points bank from the baseline Didn't bird and MJ call that in a commercial <laughs> Was Santo on that three here's Appleby another blow by then he stops up and under draws the foul plus the basket Tyree Appleby With a little ad-lib and Appleby's already got ten points I mean, what body control there. He just tells the defense, hey, guess what? I'm faster than you, and I'm smarter than you. Go for this pump fake and one. Talking to this coaching staff before the game, they talked about he's so much better when he's playing off of two feet. He wasn't flying in there away from the basket off of one foot, flying into the cameraman down below, two feet with a strong finish. Talk about slamming the brakes. I can't believe he wasn't forced to drag that pivot foot. That, of course, would have been a walk. He did not. And Appleby gives Wake Forest its biggest lead of this game, 16 points. What do you need to see from LSU right now? Well, K.J. Williams hadn't had a touch, really, since the first couple of minutes. I mean, 12 and Purple has to get the ball. Instead, a turnover. Appleby on a steal. Appleby on a Euro. Appleby on a left-handed finish. Wow, what a half for Appleby. as good as any player I've seen so far in this early college basketball season. And this goes right to what we were just talking about, right? The portal. Yep. He's on his third school, and as you mentioned very correctly, he was good at Florida. He was a yep. good player. He wasn't this kind of player, though, as we're seeing so far. 13 points on 5 for 5 shooting. LSU remains chilly. And a good stick back that time, slittering in is Derek Fountain. He's been better the closer he is around the basket. At Mississippi State, more of a pick-and-pop guy was Fountain. Doing a little bit of work down low has been better for him. Andrew Carr leaves it off to Appleby. Directing traffic. High ball screen by Marsh. Whipped into the corner. Sets up an open three. <laughs> that was a great look by Appleby. Wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, that, that was a dime. Didn't get it connected. But again, if I'm LSU... You, you got to call 12's number. Uh, you saw the post up early, the pick and pop. There's so many different places you can get Williams the ball on the court. Just got to get it in his hands. LSU has just got to find some type of rhythm offensively. They've been in a funk for almost this entire first half. Skip pass into the corner. Great ball movement. Lining up a three. Back iron that time for Williams. 
Well, and that started with the defense by Monsanto. He made Miller's catch so tough on that double screen. Never got the rhythm. I mean, there's on fire, and then there's what Tyree Appleby is doing. Six for six and 15 points. And LSU with a response. Boy, they needed that bucket because this game was getting away from them because Tyree Appleby has taken this thing over. Give him the ball and get out of the way. LSU just 30% from the field. Williams with seven now for the Tigers. Appleby passed up the three. Nice feed again. Wide open tray from the corner. Buried by Hildreth. Boy, that is a great feed by Appleby. Being under control, getting the penetration, not over penetrating, and then terrific movement by Hildreth. It's our first look in person at Wake Forest. But you have to wonder, this could be a surprise team in the ACC this year. You gotta love the play so far in this game with 6.58 to go, first half. All Demon Deacons thus far. And every Appleby show thus far in Atlanta. And after that last made basket, it was him as a facilitator. Tyree Appleby has just managed this game extremely well. Look at two and white. The shooter, Hildreth, is going to go to the corner. Appleby puts his head down, attacks, and realizes, hey, I got two on one on the perimeter. A beautiful find, good movement. And that's how you run a team and look for yourself, but also look for others. One in white has been phenomenal in this game. Guy that hit that shot, Hildreth, had a triple double earlier in the game this season. Meanwhile, LSU went in doubt. Go to KJ Williams. Yeah, good things happen when he touches the ball. He's a willing passer as well out of the post, and the post touches are going to be tough, so that might lead to more three point opportunities for him. Williams leading LSU at 10 points. He's been the one consistent factor in this game for the Bayou Bengals. What a ball movement by Wake. Monsanto. That was a heat check. Well, when you bank a three from the corner, you got to do a heat check. I don't blame him. Blocked by Wake. Bodies colliding. Wake scoops it up. Demon Deacons on the attack. Inside. Can't get it to Carr. But it will remain Wake Forest basketball. Here's that bank three we talked about earlier. Monsanto. Does it nip? Yes, it does. <laughs> I mean, you got to be pretty off to the left to make that happen. <laughs> Luck is on their side. Defying physics. Banging bodies inside and a turnover. Good defense that time by LSU. Here come the Tigers in transition. A floater. This is everything. That was a, a travel and an air ball in one possession. LSU's got a calm down make sure they're getting quality looks with their best offensive threats five and a half to go here in the first half Wake will spread it out now all five players on the perimeter for Appleby finds an open man in the corner and a reach in foul on 44 Adam Miller And we've got our first NBA Saturday primetime matchup of the season on ABC and the ESPN app. Jason Tatum and the Eastern Conference leading Celtics play the first NBA Saturday primetime matchup of the season on ABC and the ESPN app. Jason Tatum and the Eastern Conference leading Celtics play the fourth game of a six-game road trip against Steph and the Warriors. An NBA Finals rematch. Our coverage beginning tonight with NBA Countdown at 8 o'clock Eastern time. going to be offensive. A little clear out action that time by Andrew Carr, his second foul. And that's why Fountain got the starting nod today. I mean, he's done a really good job defensively, been solid. 6'10", you know, he, he kind of sneaks up on you a little bit defensively and offensively, just kind of hangs around, makes the right play, nothing too flashy. Here's the, the question. Matt McMahon might be asking the same question, Dane. Other than K.J. Williams, where, where's your best option on the floor if you're LSU? Well, it's just so tough to get 44 Miller the ball, but he's in a dynamite three-point shooter. And, but if they're going to cover up Miller, you got to be able to make a layup to make the team pay. That's an uncontested. Oh, my 
my goodness! Alley oop feed and Matthew Marsh brought 250 pounds down on the rim. LSU just trying to survive this first half, taking body blows, taking headshots. Appleby finds the cutter and a foul called. So in control, Appleby, and dropping the last dime as well. I mean, you can't play the point guard position any more perfect than Appleby's played. Here's transition, gets a little ball screen, lob that thing up. Marsh, go get that thing, I got you. That's the easiest two Marshall get and just puts it up there perfectly He even knows when he's got a 30 inch vertical he's lobbing to or a 40 inch, right? Let me put it, let me put it at like 10 foot 6. Yeah, not too hot Just high enough. So when you're 7 foot 1, you, you really don't have to get no, the ground too don't. high. Yeah, he's been efficient He's done a really good job and, and credit Marsh for running the court. They want to be opportunistic in transition The miss layup on one end led to the opportunity on the other end Great job by Marsh. Yeah, but the stat sheet kind of belies who Wake Forest is because about half their shots have come from three. You say, well, maybe they're just kind of one-dimensional. But you watch the way they move the ball, and they're not one-dimensional at all. No, uh, I think they, they've got solid pieces all around. Pretty smart players that can all put it on the ground, make the right read. Nice job wow. that time, LSU, getting the bucket down low from Fountain. You feel like this is a really important last four minutes for LSU, right? I mean, this can either be something they just can't come back from at halftime, or they get this to a more manageable situation to where the halftime speech might be a little more effective. One of the rare miscues so far today by Appleby, but even with that pinball action, Wake is going to get it back when we return. 18-point lead for the Demon Deacons here from Atlanta. It seems like places are giving you less and less food these days. <laughs> yes, mama, it's called shrinkflation. Oh, shrinkflation is just another word for robbery. But this is... Zero scholarship players. But you know what? He didn't panic. They looked at it as a positive and said, hey, you were going to rebuild this thing. We're going to do it with our guys. And he attacked it really in three ways. One, let me bring the guys from Murray State that are priority. Two, let me prioritize the guys at LSU that I think would be a fit for us. And then three, see what's available to us in the transfer portal. And now all of a sudden, here they are with a 7-1 record. Not playing their best ball right now. Obviously, the most adversity they've faced so far in this season. But the way he's been able to construct this roster and put a competitive team together has been quite the offseason story. Well, you mentioned it earlier. One guy that LSU is going to need to get going is this guy, 44, Adam Miller. He's got three 20-point games on the season. He averages 17 points a game. But he has done little in this first half. Just one for four, a three-pointer. And they've tried multiple things, even the dribble handoffs, which should be the easiest way to get the ball. Wake Forest is blowing it up. That time, Williamson, four and white. Doesn't allow Williams, the big man for LSU, to just do a dribble handoff to Miller. That's how physical this defense has been. That's maybe some of the best action we've seen out of LSU today. Cam Hayes on the dime, Justice Williams on the finish. And that's coming from the film, too. They do play above the ball some, does Wake Forest. Clemson got them on a few back doors in that second half with their last loss. Good play call by LSU. Important three-minute stretch here to end the first half if you're LSU. Hildreth passed up at open three. Clintman up top. Appleby with seven on the shot clock. Ball screen. Probes. Crossover. Pull up. That's a three. And a rare miss. In fact, the only one but an offensive rebound. Wake Forest right now is killing LSU on the glass. 22 to 8. 22 to 8. So plus 14 on the glass. And now an eighth turnover on uh, the Demon Deacons. And they have had some of those turnovers, but not many live ball turnovers. And that's where a lot of LSU's offense comes from, is those transition, the steals that lead to the easy buckets had been there so far. Strong take to the basket and the finish for Fountain. I'm telling you, he's underrated. This is a good player. They want to get the ball and his hands on the perimeter, let him deck it a little bit, get to the rim. Good answer so far. We talked about how important these last four minutes were. A 20-point lead going into halftime looked inevitable for Wake Forest. LSU showing some fight. I don't think that Coach Forbes was 
thrilled with the lack of resistance on that. Healthy guards will have to step up against Diamond Miller and number 20, Maryland. Should be another great afternoon of hoops on ESPN and ABC. LSU on a little 6-0 run, trying to chip away and cut that deficit. Maybe single digits by halftime. Clinton up top, Appleby. Shot clock to 10 for Hildreth. Hildreth, strong take with the left hand, off the mark, and a nice box out that time by Williams. Fountain was phenomenal defensively on that possession. And an end one on the other end for Cam Hayes. LSU starting to put something together. And that's all Derek Fountain on the other end. I'm telling you, he came with the help. Then he closes out on a shooter. Then he contests the two, and it leads to this transition opportunity where Cam Hayes takes the buck, gets a high off the glass. And the Tigers start to put on a little bit of a run now, defense leading to offense. You mentioned high off the glass. That was about a foot above the top of the square. It was angled to drop that in. Cam Hayes, junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina, completes the three-point play. And all of a sudden, it's a 12-point game. Make it 11. Nine-0 run for LSU. Clinton finds Williamson into the corner. Left alone three. Clinton kicks off the iron, tapped out of bounds. I mean, Wake just is such a physical presence on the offensive glass. They had a number of those. Yeah, they sure have been. And LSU's just got to corral those. Make sure it's one shot and done. Get going on the other end. Bonus both ways for the final minute 20. Monsanto, never shy, missed it. And Wade gets another offensive rebound, killing him on the offensive glass. And a trip to the free throw line for Matthew Marsh. Well, we thought his size and physicality could bother Williams a little bit. And that time, KJ Williams, who usually doesn't get out muscled, got pushed under the basket. And big 33 in white says. Hey, I'm going to battle you down low. Good job boxing out. Really solid first half for the big man. The kind of guy, you, you don't want to have to box out 33 and white, right? I no. mean, that's that's not a fun day at the office. No, it's not. You, you got to get down low. Low man wins in that position and just root him out of there. Use that caboose and try to get the over the back <laughs> foul. An empty trip, though. LSU, a chance to cut it into double digits as we come up on a one-minute mark. Three from the corner. And Appleby, full throttle. Appleby, one on three. Not a good decision that time. And LSU, transition the other way. Here it comes. Two-hand flush for K.J. Williams. The number one key to start this game for Wake Forest was no live ball turnovers. You see why. One of the few mistakes Appleby has made. And all of a sudden, it is a single-digit game. Williams leading the way with 12 points. An 11-0 run for the Bayou Bengals. Appleby, alley -oop. Oh, my goodness! Matthew Marsh dropping the hammer! Oh, my gosh, what a play for the second time. Tyree Appleby is going to throw this up, and Matthew Marsh says, Hey, can you find England on a map? It's on your dome! <laughs> I got you, England. Wow, nice spacing. Great finish. I wish I had a great British expression to describe that play, but I, I'm coming up with nothing. There's one word. I'm not even sure if it's profanity in America. <laughs> so I'm just staying away from it altogether. We don't, we don't need to pull out card no, 99. No, I managed to go this long without card 99. Oh, nice play. Rims off. There he is again. Offensive rebound and drawing the foul. Derek Fountain has been a difference maker for LSU. Oh, he has. I mean, he just, again, nothing flashy, just being active. And the more work he does in the paint, the better player he is. And he has been a big reason why LSU has been able to hang in there. And 
hats off to LSU in this last four minute stanza where this game could have gone one way or another and now they're going to go into halftime with a little momentum and belief for a second half victory 17 fouls means a one and one for Fountain who's shooting 87 percent from the line transfer out of Mississippi State and he knocks down the first Holly Springs Mississippi is where Derek Fountain calls home of course Mississippi State went through a coaching change as well and Derek Fountain decided a change of scenery would be best well, with five seconds left for Wake Forest, it helps to have such a speedy guard Appleby. He can get it off the court and get a quality look off of this little time. Oh, that one works out well and turns out to be a three-point play. And what a way to end the half for LSU. All of a sudden, it is an eight-point game. 14-2 run. Adam Miller has been quiet. Basically, the two guys that have kept LSU in this game, K.J. Williams and Derek Fountain, who could be a key for them all year long. Fountain was terrific for LSU in the first half, but LSU will not win this game if they can't get 44 Miller some more touches. A lot of that was credit to Wake Forest, blowing up ball screens and handoffs, but they got to get him the ball somehow. Anything differently you want to see out of LSU in this second half? They'll keep playing through K.J. Williams. They forgot about him too often in that first half. They don't forget him here, and right on cue, partner, K.J. Williams drills a triple. He's got 15, and it's a five-point game. And Wake Forest seems to be okay leaving him open for that shot, but so far, he has made them pay three for four on the afternoon. Williamson on the other end with a triple, flying in for the rebound. It's Justice Williams. Flying pass, and a little careless. Didn't need it. Wake Forest on the other end, off the turnover. Williamson all the way. Good job by Williamson, who came over with Steve Forbes from ETSU. Solid player. Good finish. And after that turnover, Matt McMahon turned to his players on the bench and started barking. He was not a happy camper with that turnover. Squelched some of the momentum for LSU. And they got the nice backdoor feed. They wanted a foul, unable to get it. There's Appleby taking advantage of the mismatch with the speed. Plays much bigger than his six foot, 175 pound frame would indicate. This has a way of slithering in and sneaking yep. the ball up to the rim. Very crafty. And it just finds a way again. Look at that two foot finish. What Jason Shea of Wake Forest staff told me was. Hey, when he gets in trouble is when he jumps off one feet and he's flying through the air, kind of like an Allen Iverson would or somebody back in the day. When he's under control, has the body control, he's money. And spins out. Rebound far for Williams had it, and then it's off of Wake out of bounds. Wait a minute. And we might have an overrule. You had Mike Roberts say LSU basketball, and then Steve Anderson, who was on the baseline, said, I've got something else. He's calling a foul. Their bodies tangled up, and they're going to call this on Fountain. Oh, we might have a is that a hook and hold? Hook, but no, I think they got it right here by just falling down on they, they're hmm. calling the foul on rolling into his legs there. And now you see both officials, Mike Roberts, Steve Anderson, making sure what they've got here because you had two different calls almost simultaneously. Okay, they're going to. It looks like they're going to call out of bounds occurred before the foul. So that'd be LSU basketball, would it not? Yes. I'll see. Cool. Got it. Yep. So out of bounds prior to the foul. And Wake Forest going a little full court band to band. I'm sorry. <laughs> Front court band all turned around. We got all turned around. That whole, that 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 whole exchange threw me off. Another turnover. And will be on another finish. He's got 19 points. And then once he gets it, he is gone. He is a jet to the other end. You got Williams up top. Ball goes down low, and again, Derek Fountain has been a force. You and I covered him at Mississippi State. He was a, a role player off the bench, but he's playing at a different level right now. And here you're going to see Wake Forest just their ability to get out and transition. They're opportunistic. They're not going to push the pace simply to get a shot up quick. But when they have their opportunities, they'll get it and go. And Appleby playing with that freedom. You know, when, when you see 
a marked improvement in someone's game like Tyree Appleby. We're not talking about freshman to sophomore year. We're talking about a senior, a guy who's been around the block a while. Yeah. Sometimes it'll be, well, he, you know, he, he shed 15 pounds and improved his body, uh, something physical. He's basically the same body as right. well. It's just a different looking player. It, it is. And I think some of that, too, is the system. Uh, I think last year at Florida, he seemed to get stuck in a lot of positions where he was had the ball in his hands late in the shot clock and taking a lot of bad shots. I, again, I think the quality of his looks has been much better under Coach Steve Forbes and this staff. We talked about Wake Forest dominating the glass in the first half. It's LSU getting more aggressive on the offensive glass here in the second. And, and to finish that thought with Appleby with the player development and the shot selection, uh, Jason Shea, who I mentioned is a member of this coaching staff, I had a benefit of playing for under him at Tennessee as well. Look, there's not a better X's and O's guy. Nobody can get you better looks offensively than that guy. He's a genius, and so not a surprise to see that player development going the way it is for Tyree Appleby. Great action off the inbounds to K.J. Williams. He leads the LSU Tigers with 17 points, and it's back to a nine-point game. I think it's safe to say we highlighted the right two players in the open. We don't, we don't ordinarily get that right, do we? And we've been highlighting Fountain here recently, and he deserves it. Good job. Williams feeling it. He is on fire. 20 points now for K.J. Williams. At some point, you got to start treating him like a three-point specialist. Make him put it on the deck. Four of five from three now. And then another turnover on Wake Forest. Eight second half points for K.J. Williams. I mean, he came into the game shooting around 40% from three as it was. Here's a trailer three, and just about all of those has been phenomenal for LSU on an otherwise poor shooting night for their offense. Just look at what he's been able to do versus the rest of the team. I'm no, I'm no wizard of offense, but that tells me to get K.J. Williams the ball. I, I would uh, co-sign on that. I think Matt McMahon will as well. We talked about Matt McMahon when he got the job. Williams again! Oh my goodness! Absolutely igniting here in the second half. 11 of his 23. And that's a short closeout by Marsh. You gotta get into him when he's that red hot from three. Take your chances on the bounce. Turnover and a steal by Williams. LSU with a chance to tie on a three. In and out, but a foul down low. And it'll go against the Demon Deacons. Well, instead of a regular ball screen for K.J. Williams, he does one of these slips. I mean, that doesn't actually set it. And then Marsh says, I'm here. I'm seven feet. I got a hand up. Well, that, that's not good enough right now when this guy is shooting that confidently from three. And the trick for Wake Forest is K.J. Williams can put it on the deck a little bit so he can take Marsh off the bounce, giving his foot speed advantage. But you got to take away the three first with this guy. Here's that man. Draws a double. Set up three. At the top, Cam Hayes. And we are tied. Seven. 11-0 run for LSU. Hayes with 11. Appleby with an answer on the other end with a hanging layup. This has turned out to be one heck of a game. We were wondering where we were going early on. Wake Forest was up by 20 in the first half. LSU looked a little lifeless on offense. We talked about LSU has some spurt ability, but this is to the extreme. Uh, and back and forth action, and on the other end, Appleby, such a good job not settling from three, getting in there, taking the contact, and finishing above the rim, or excuse me, below the rim, but a strong finish through contact. Last year, LSU played in this event. They trailed Georgia Tech big at the half, but had a huge second half run, wound up winning the game. Knocked out of bounds. It'll remain LSU basketball with 12 on the shot clock. Oh, how things have changed here in Atlanta. And the stars have shown up to play for LSU. It's K.J. Williams, who is just red hot from deep. The big man has five triples, and Tyra Appleby says, I'm going to take it at you, big fella. Right in your house, I'm going to come away with two. We got a good one. The Heisman Trophy Ceremony, tonight at 8 on ESPN. It's right here, and we'll be 
showing you that undefeated Auburn squad taking on Memphis and Penny Hardaway. What a matchup that is. There'll be plenty of electricity in that ball game. That'll be 5 o'clock on ESPN2. Mike Morgan, Dane Bradshaw with you here for the first of three. We'll have that one as well. We can only hope that one will live up to the excitement of this ball game thus far. LSU on a monster run here in the second half. They tied it at one point, two-point game here. This the guy has been the story. That time a little too strong on the hook. Now, what do the Demon Deacons need to do to get back into a flow? Well, keep working it late in the clock. It's a good look there, but what, what worked so well for them in the first half was just the quality of looks they were getting oftentimes deep in the shot clock make LSU work They tend to break down defensively in the half court if they can't turn you over LSU was seven steals. That's not a number Wake Forest can stand to let grow and LSU averages over nine steals a game. It's a big part of their defense that turns into offense Eight points now for Hildreth Steve Forbes basically signing Cameron Hildreth sight unseen. Again, he's from England, and his father actually played for Nick Nurse when he was a the coach there. And Nick Nurse said, I'm telling you what, Steve, you're going to want to sign the son. He's going to be a player for you. And Steve Forbes said, you know what? I trust you. we got a scally for it. <laughs> Nick Nurse is a great friend of Coach Forbes, and so uh, I'd say that's a pretty good referral. When Nick Nurse says, take this guy. Do we have that kind of trust where I could just tell you, Dane, go ahead and sign this kid? As long as he's as good as Cam Hildreth, <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll take it. And, and Hildreth, I mean, he's one of those guys that can get to the paint. Wake Forest was red hot from three to start the game, but cooled off. They got to get themselves with a free throw line and some paint touches. Hildreth, mid-range, off the mark. And a rebound scooped up by Fountain. Four-point game, under 15 to play. Here in Atlanta, State Farm Arena. Terrific tournament once again. Holiday hoops given. Second of four matchups as Justice Hill gets the friendly bounce, the senior out of Little Rock. See if that doesn't get him going some. He's been struggling a little bit and he uh, made the right read. Wake Forest dared him to shoot it. They went under the ball screen. He got the roll. That's his first basket of the game. He'll do it. Looking into the eyes of Miller, gets a screen, crossover, pivot, jump pass inside, and a close miss that time. Everything but the bucket from Keller. Quick hands, and right into our, oh, Dane. It's on you. Good, Mike. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> That I'm surprised my, you didn't shoot it. I, I, I thought I, about it. I know, it. You, you know you're allergic to leather. You, you get that thing out of your hand That's, real quick. I, I have been known to, to, to be a chucker. I'm just glad I didn't turn it over. Williams again. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just catch, spot, fire, oozing confidence. A 26-point game. For KJ Williams. And Keller says, I was there, coach. My hand was there. Well, I mean, nobody has made KJ Williams put it on the ground yet. This guy now on the year is over 50% from three after today. First lead for LSU since 8 6. And then Appleby says, I'm going to take the lead right back. Well, and he's the one guy for Wake Forest that can get past his man and get to the paint. The other guy is not as talented with their penetration. 23 for Appleby, 26 for Williams. The stars shining bright so far in this one. The lefty triggers a three. It's Williams again. Crashing, cramming. This guy has been unbelievable. He's going to ask for a breather, and I'm sure Coach McMahon says, come on, bear with me. Get to the other 12, and we'll give you one. Still out there hedging, flying around on defense. Three from the corner. No, Williams, who else, tears away the rebound. A.J. Williams' career high for threes is five coming into this game. He's six for seven so far today. No defense on the drive, Cam Hayes. 
Search the Red Sea gets the cram. He's got 13, and LSU is up by three. And because of the way they have to respect Williams' three, his hit man was hugged up on him opening that driving lane. Step back three, Appleby kicks off. Williams had it, lost it. But it will be LSU basketball when we come back. Frenetic pace, terrific action here in Atlanta. Well, KJ Williams has taken this game. LSU up by three. Yeah, and Steve Forbes right now would tell you for Wake Forest, hey, this game changed the last four minutes of the first half. They had a 20-point lead. Then they fell asleep at the wheel a little bit with LSU getting some easy buckets on the other end. And next thing you know, a talented LSU team had some hope in the locker room. And, man, they've come out with momentum, making 12 and purple KJ Williams a priority, whereas the first half, he wasn't getting nearly as many touches. Williams on a blow by. What can he do? Well, again, that's the challenge. Marsh doesn't have the foot speed he has, but Marsh has to respect the three now. What's KJ Williams do? He counters with a drive on the big man. 30 points, and he's done it every way possible. KJ Williams. Notches the largest lead of the game for the Tigers. Williams on another rebound. Kick basketball. On Wake Forest. I asked Matt McMahon before tip off today, I said, How did KJ Williams slip through the cracks? I mean, he winds up at Murray State. No knock on Murray State. It's a great program. Three NCAA tournaments under Coach McMahon. He was recruited by Ole Miss and Mississippi State. But one thing Matt McMahon did well, just ask John Morant. He yeah. gets on players early before their stock really grows. And when he gets on them early, they typically stay. That's what happened with John Morant. And that's what happened with KJ Williams. And the rich history of Murray State to say, hey, you know what? You can go to the NBA from here. Right? You can go to the NCAA tournament. And there's plenty of examples. Campaign, John Morant, KJ Williams tested the draft waters, came back, and huge gift for Coach McMahon to bring him down to Baton Rouge. And he is going to be a force to be reckoned with throughout the Southeastern Conference this year. I, I, it's the first time I've seen K.J. Williams in person. Knew about the numbers. Again, Ohio Valley Conference Player of the Year. Led the league in scoring, second in rebounding. Those numbers speak for themselves. But what we've seen here from number 12 in purple, that is beyond impressive, and he deserves a breather right now. And really, it's the three-point shot that is has uh, proven to be the difference in this game for him, but I promise you, you guys hadn't even seen half of what he can do in the post, going over left hand, right hand, you name it. But he's coming out of the game now, so an opportunity for Wake Forest to maybe get some stops. Oh, balance three by Miller. Williams, by the way, wore the same number as one John Morant at Murray State, number 12. Inside, and the finish. Boy, they just come at you with waves and waves of seven-footers. That's Matthew Marsh. He's had a fine game. Nine points. And that starts with Monsanto turning down the three. Known for his three-point shooting, but realizing we got to make this an interior game right now with Williams out. Good job on the drive. Yeah, that'll be interesting with Williams on the bench. Where does LSU turn? Drive. And a foul. Might have gotten some body. Not sure. I mentioned John ja Morant, and by now, John ja Morant has already staked his claim as one of the most exciting players in the NBA. Had a terrific career at Murray State. And the whole LSU team, when Memphis was in town in New Orleans, got to go to a game, got to visit with John ja Morant. There's John ja with the jersey with Coach Matt McMahon. Coach McMahon telling us they stay in touch. John ja Morant still very thankful for his time and his direction under Coach Matt McMahon. Pretty cool experience if you're a 19, 20-year-old college basketball player and you're out hanging with John Moran. Yeah, and John Moran, a guy that just stayed true to his school. Plenty of people wanted to come in late in the recruiting process. The transfer portal wasn't quite as dominant back then as it was as it is now, but he had plenty of opportunities. He said, no, I'm a Murray State guy, and anytime Murray State gets a win, he's tweeting out the horses on his phone for racers and has certainly become beloved in all of NBA basketball, specifically in Memphis. LSU just four for 11 from the free throw line, so the lead is at four, 59-55, under 10 minutes to go. Appleby's been terrific so far for the Demon Deacons. They've got a hold, I believe, on LSU. I think they've got Kendall Coleman. Yes, that'll be the second foul on the 6'8 junior out of Shreveport.
And, and Mike, unlike LSU, Wake Forest doesn't really have a guy they can play out of at the post. Nice job there on the baseline out of bounds play. But in the half court set, nobody you really play through, feed off of. And so to get steal some points on the inbounds is really important Ten for their points. offense. Yeah, no doubt. Ten points now for Matthew Marsh. Continues to play big. The Wake Forest down to a two-point lead. Hill finds space. Can't get it to drop. Chance to tie or take the lead if you're the Demon Deacons. Hildreth into Marsh, but that one just off the fingertips. Yeah, good look, just a little bit high. I think they've gotten some good action in the middle of the court. Evidenced by a couple lobs that Marsh has gotten from Appleby. That time just didn't execute. Steve Forbes looking on third year with Wake Forest. He's going to make some noise in the ACC. I have no doubt that this program, not just this season, but in the future, they are going to make some noise. Yeah, they, they made noise earlier than anybody expected with that incredible run last year, earning him the ACC Coach of the Year. This guy and his staff, they win everywhere they go. Remember, they lost last year's ACC Player of the Year to Londis Williams, who averaged over 20 points, six rebounds, five assists a game. Almost a steal that time by Hayes. Sets up an open three. Wake has gone chilly from the arc. Offensive rebound, though. And a nice scooping running layup that time by Bobby Clintman. That's the first two points for Clintman. Really patient. I thought he could have forced a tough two, took a couple dribbles, and just found the opening. Clintman from Sweden, so you got two Brits and a Swede on this Wake Forest roster. Williams back in the game, goes to work, draws a double team. What's the call? Jump ball. Timeout on the floor. Well, they've got a manufacturer offense, does Demon Deacons, and that time on the offensive glass just keeps moving, moving, finds the opening. And this is a back and forth game going down to the wire. Bob Pettit, Pistol Pete Maravich, jerseys up here in the State Farm Arena, number 9, number 44, and they both played for LSU. Bob back in the 50s, Pistol Pete, the all-time leading scorer in the late 60s, 1970. I, I, I think for most of us, even though we weren't alive, there's an and one for Hildreth. He had a good start to this game. They could use a good finish from number two in white. I think most people know about Pistol Pete. Google Bob Pettit. He was a heck of a player. Well, I got to go back to Pistol Pete because that's what I grew up on. Yeah. Was the four VHS the cassette videos. tapes, the videos, the Pistol Pete, Pistol Pete homework basketball. <laughs> I've still got them. I just don't have a VHS or anywhere to put them in. <laughs> got to adjust the tracking. Yeah. Yeah, I've still got those somewhere. Let's say if you went to a basketball camp as a youth, chances are one of the counselors put that thing on the old yep. projection just let it let him cook I think they're seeing who the foul is on Looked like fountain number 20 it's just a terrific play out of the timeout oh, by Steve Forbes running. and this team to run a backdoor cut for Hildreth One shot. trying to get themselves to the free throw line this is just the 10th free throw attempt for them in the game they'd like to be higher than that Knocked it down. Three the hard way for Wake. Back on top. Now by three. Back and forth we go. Seven and a half to play here in Atlanta. And that'll be a foul on Appleby. Hounding the action up top. And hounding Justice Williams. Well, we mentioned to start this half 44 and purple Adam Miller was gonna have to make a couple shots for him so far Just one of nine Let's see if he can't find an opening Wake Forest can't forget about What how dangerous he can be? Open three no Williams Williams that time got boxed out by Appleby. Yeah, good call. I mean that was excellent By Tyree Appleby shows it doesn't matter how big you are you get in a stance you get low 
and you can get the big man off the boards. Appleby and Williams have been the stars of this game in every way, shape possible. Appleby pivots out to Clipman on an open three. Left it short. Rebound fought for. Officials say LSU ball. Good hustle that time by 25, Zach Keller. Check out this box out. Look at Appleby. <laughs> Getting down low, boxing them out. That is textbook right there. That's fantastic. You can't do it any better. That is fantastic. Williams posted up, now sets a screen. Back on the perimeter, left alone. He's got a guard number 12 in purple. A game of the ages for K.J. Williams now at 33 points. Uh, I mean, at some point, he's just a no-lead guy. And, and they've been able to milk the clock a little bit on the half court and just get, get him open, whether it's early in the clock or late. Keller trying to respond, can't do it. Williams out of the pack, fouled on the giddy up by Keller. Williams will go for a new season high at the free throw line. Uh, you can't fault the effort here by Keller. Great job sprinting back. And from this angle, it looked like he got a lot of ball. We'll see what shows on the replay here. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty clean. Mm. Got a little bit of body there on the way up. I think that's what the refs called was on the body. But man, just when you think Wake Forest might get this game under control, start pulling away a little bit to build some of that three-point lead. KJ Williams with his seventh triple. Now, if LSU does lose this game, they're going to look back some empty trips at the line. Four for 12 in this game. Second one up for Williams. Can't get it to drop. But an offensive rebound and a stick back. Derek Fountain is another guy having a memorable game for the Tigers. Well, they have missed free throws, but they've also got at least four points on offensive rebounds on those free throws. That, that's where Wake Forest just, Steve Forbes shakes his head and says, guys, there's no reason we should not be able to box out on a missed free throw. That ball hit Marsh in the head and ricocheted right to a teammate in the corner. Shot clock under 10 for Appleby. Ball screened by Marsh. Appleby whips it into Marsh. Too hot to handle. Two point, two point lead for LSU with the basketball. Nearly 15 minutes into the action here at half number two. It's just got to be pick and pop Williams, right? For a backdoor cut and a finish that time by Justice Williams. What a great second option where everybody's focused on the pop. Appleby now. That's a couple times he's been burned ball watching on the baseline. Good active movement by LSU. Again, high ball screen. Hildred on the drive. Whistle on the floor. Tony Green says that foul will be on the floor. No basket. And that'll be team foul number four. Yeah, that's a foul. Steve Forbes in here to one. Hildred did such a nice job probing there. He looked at his big man on the roll. Hesitation. Got himself to the rim. But here's now for the second time. They just don't put a body on anybody. And Fountain just being active down low. Continue to go after it. Got to stay focused. Inside, basket, plus the foul. A chance at three for Andrew Carr, the transfer from Delaware. He does a really good job here, just keeping it high. Getting where he wants after a couple drills, staying, dribbles, stays patient. High release over Williams. Four points now for Carr. He averages 10 points, five rebounds again. Out of Westchester, Pennsylvania. And at 220 pounds, very impressed how he was able to create space there against the stronger defender, Williams. Good, aggressive play. A one-point game with four and a half to play. Williams drives, dishes, open three, kicks out. 
Nice job on the box out by Carr. Here come the Demon Deacons, a chance to regain the lead. Appleby, surgical. Appleby, beautiful finish. Wow, that was good there. I mean, he came back with a second ball screen. He had a layup for himself or Carr. Don't be surprised if they don't go right back to that exact same action next time down the court. 25 for Appleby and with an exhausted K.J. Williams, Matt McMahon says, let's get a breather. Let's get a T.O. 350 to play. It is coming down to the wire, Dane Bradshaw. A one we could have gone with. Certainly Adam Miller has been good for LSU this year, but he's been ice cold today. And for Wake Forest, you know, Kildreth has been a solid performer all year long, but Appleby has stolen the show. But I'll say this about Miller, the attention he draws. I mean, he has really helped the spacing of the LSU offense with his three-point shooting ability. Fountain takes it in down low and draws a foul on Carr. This guy's absolutely been an X-factor in this game as Derek Fountain. He got the start, had been coming off the bench, and just doing the little things, staying active around the glass. Defensively, he's been extremely solid. And that time, has a physical take, gets himself to the free throw line. Now, Andrew Carr has just fouled out of the game, so we mentioned the, the waves of big men Wake Forest can throw at you. They just lost one of them. Puts a little extra pressure on Matthew Marsh and company to carry the workload down low. Fountain knocks down the first. Don't forget tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN. The 88th annual Heisman Trophy ceremony presented by Nissan. The four finalists, all quarterbacks. Bennett, Duggan, Stroud. Caleb Williams, Chris Bauer will host it for the 29th straight year. I gotta tell you, Dane, I got my ballot in. That was the hardest ballot I have ever filled out. I, I felt like I was making a life-changing decision. Well, as a Tennessee alum, I still think Hinton and Hooker should be there. <laughs> I'm not better. Yo, no, that's great a sensitive Kansas. subject. Yes, yeah. very sensitive subject. Inside, Hildred tried to muscle it in there, but he was right in the middle of an LSU sandwich. Yeah, they're confident going to Hildred down there. They, they just hadn't been able to get the production at that spot that they'd like to. Normally, more reliable and productive down low is Hildred. Five times, eight lead changes in this game. Some major runs by both teams. Oh, over the top. There he is. And that's like candy. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to play over the top, then there's got to be backside help. And Marsh decided, hey, I'm going to front the post for at least three quarters, and there was no weak side help at all. A new high for K.J. Williams, 35 points. Hildreth left alone, missed everything. Well, they went back to that screen, rescreen action, except Appleby decided not to attack and get to the paint. Not a bad look from three, but I like Appleby going to the paint. Williams, a season-high 35, his career-high 39. That came while he was a Murray State racer. He's posting up here, carved out space, and he just couldn't hold on. If he did, he was right on the block. Oh, Wake Forest caught a break there, because you're exactly right. He had good, deep post positioning. About to go up over that left shoulder. But I'd like to see Marsh back up here in ball screens and Appleby not settle. Keep his head down going to the rim. Only seven turnovers for LSU. Three-point game as we near the two-minute mark. There we go. And it's worked three times today. Appleby to Matthew Marsh, who's got 13. He's just so hard to get around with that huge body. When you get screened by him, even when you go under, if he rolls, all of a sudden, that's 250 pounds, seven feet rolling into you. Tough for LSU to is recover. There, is there a better way to defend it? I, I think you try to force over the top, but Appleby's such a good penetrator, he's going to kill you that way. Offensive rebound, Williams. Hayes thought about it. He can't connect. One-point game, one and a half minutes to go from Atlanta. Well, you know exactly what's happening here, the play that's worked so well for him. LSU might need to try to hard hedge here a little bit better. There's the high ball screen, Appleby. There's the roll to the basket. Appleby gets the contact and the whistle. And here's Marsh. He's going to set this ball screen. Defender tries to go over the top. 
And then KJ Johnson, or excuse me, Williams stays in there a little bit too long. And then here's that deep post position before with no backside help. That will be 87% on the year, and it rims out. He's missed one free throw today, now one for two. Team high, 25 points. Senior out of Jacksonville, Arkansas. Knocks down the second. Tie ball game. With a minute, that stoic look on his face, that, that's been there for two hours. Yeah. It, it doesn't Great matter point. if he hits a dunk, a three, yeah. grabs a rebound. It's the same emotion every time. Absolutely. And, of course, they're going to have to do some action to play through him one way or another, whether it's early in the clock or late. Williams up top. Hands it off on the weave to Hayes. Hayes in the corner to Hill. Good job by Hildreth discouraging that post pass with the help. Williams down low. They had him. Now they find him. Williams. Yeah, rims out. Oh, man. Halfway down and around and then pops out. Unbelievable. What a huge break for Wake Forest. Three up top. That one rims out. That looked good by Monsanto, their top three-point shooter. I tell you, twice now they've gotten good looks for K.J. Williams. One was a turnover where he bobbled it. One, he missed the layup. But I like that look again, sealing deep down low for Williams. Timeout LSU. Shot clock is off. I, I have Says committed to saying, hey, we're going to help off a shooter to discourage the post pass to Williams and make somebody else beat us. K.J. Williams, maybe the best performance in the short history of this event. 35 points to go along with 10 rebounds. A monster double-double for the transfer from Murray State. And Tyree Appleby, one of the best games he's ever played. 26 points, 11 of 13 from the field. And if there is a miss, you better box out Derek Fountain. He has been the X-Factor all game, keeping the ball alive for LSU. 20 and purple. Williams is down near the right block. Goes up top to Hill. Shot clock is off. Ten seconds to go. Hill has it moved. Seven seconds to go. Hill spinning, driving. Hill with the finish! Timeout with first with 2.1 to go! The threat of K.J. Williams from three has right. worked. But with such little time, he's not going to have but... Max two dribbles. Well, let's see what Steve Forbes and the Demon Deacons have drawn up with 2.1 on the clock, a two-point game. Deep pass in the lane. Caught by Fountain at LSU. And the Tigers have pulled off an incredible comeback. Once down by 20 points, they win it.